Now, here I can still go another course. Okay, I'm not at the, I'm not at the limits of the right. stake yet. And you don't have to bring it totally to the limits of the stake. In fact, at this point, I could skip right to this. As you get better and better at this, you'll find that you can skip a lot of steps. Uh, I'm just going to give one more course on here. So what you do, you're going to tighten the axis, right? So you're basically tightening the core. Anneal it first. I'm just going to go through non-annealing for a couple mm -hmm. of courses and anneal it. Anneal after every course. Tighten it. It will also be easy to do this part. So what creates that curl is the way you start that initial curve. Yes, you start so the you're curve. You're holding it at an then, angle. And then I'm locking the form in by anticrusting right. it. Right. Uh, so now I'm like the bracelet. I'm at the point of all the forms. I, as I uh, carefully bend the axis right. into a tighter curl, the, ra the radial curve opens up. Yeah. It allows me to go back to the stake, and now I have air under there. In placing it, just pull it like an accordion. Mm -hmm. Treat this like a spring. You can pull it out or you can push it in. And you're going to be doing that quite a bit. It's already a, kind, it's already a spring, although this is hard. But if this were annealed, you can feel it better. And if this were gold, thin gold, it would actually be a spring. You could go like this or that. Brunt and copper alloys are not very springy. You know, they tend to be fairly dense metals. Platinum is the worst. You know, you bend it and it stays there. But there's a lot of resilience when you get to uh, gold and silver. One of the reasons people like alloy. Pure gold is very soft. Mm -hmm. But when you, as soon as you alloy gold, it gets the beautiful properties of ductility. See, pinch. Pinch. One edge. Right down the middle. It looks like the center here because right. it's so narrow. Okay, gotcha. 